a rivet is specified as 30 mm rivet what does it mean so a rivet is specified as 30 mm rivet what does it mean we have to answer and the given options are both head and shank diameter are 30 mm shank diameter is 30 mm head diameter is 30 mm none of the above mentioned so when the rivet is specified as 30 mm that means the diameter of shank is 30 mm so therefore option b shank dia 30 mm is the correct answer which of the following material is not suitable for riveting so the question is about which of the following material is not suitable for riveting given options are mild steel copper aluminium and cast iron so rivets are made of ductile material so in the given options mild steel it is an ductile material copper it is also an ductile material aluminium ductile material and the cast iron is the brittle material therefore option d is correct option that means cast iron is not suitable for riveting according to ibr the factor of safety of a riveted joint should not be less than 1, 2, 3 and 4, the factor of safety. So, IVR is Indian Boiler Regulation. So, it is a regulation for inspection and certification of boilers and boiler components during the manufacturing, erection and use. So, IVR decides and certifies the boiler and boiler components manufacturing erection and use so according to ibr the riveted joint should not be have less factor of safety less than 4 that is option d is correct option Kirkling in rivets makes leak proof, improves strength, corrosion resistance, none of above. So let's see what is the meaning of Kirkling in the rivets. So you can see here we have a Kirkling tool and by that we are producing the Kirkling here. By this Kirkling the rivet will be leak proof so that means option a is correct option fullering in rivets make leak proof improves strength corrosion resistance none of above so let's see what is fullering is so you can see the fullering where we are producing certain angle between the plates so with this full ring the riveted joint will be leak proof that is option a is correct option rivet material has to be soft brittle tough and hard so the question is about rivet material so we know rivets are made up of ductile material so here brittle is not a ductile toughness 
is not the ductile and hardness is not the ductile so ductile materials are also called as soft materials therefore option a soft is correct option efficiency of a joint is the ratio of x with solid plate tearing strength per pitch length where x is so we have to answer what is this x means given options are tearing strength crushing strength shearing strength or minimum of a b and c so the efficiency of riveted joints is defined as ratio of strength of riveted joint to the strength of unriveted solid plate so here we have to answer what is this axis out of this so efficiency new can be written as strength of riveted joint to the strength of unriveted solid plate unriveted joint or solid plate so strength of riveted joint so we have three types of strengths that is crushing strength tearing strength and shearing strength so here strength of riveted joints are nothing but cutting crushing strength shearing strength and tearing strength that is here pt ps and pc whereas strength of unriveted solid plate is equal to p into t into rho t where rho t is permissible tensile stress of the plate material so here out of these three strengths the least of pt ps and pc is considered for calculating the efficiency of riveted joint so that concludes option d minimum of abc that is tearing crushing and shearing strength minimum is the x factor so therefore option d is correct option a horizontal plate has been joined to a vertical post using four rivets arranged as shown in figure the magnitude of the load on the worst loaded rivet in newton is so they are telling to find magnitude of the load on the worst loaded rivet we have the given figure where 400 newton force is applied at a distance of 500 mm and these are four rivets let me mark it as 1 2 3 and 4 and when we draw the free body diagram let me call this as fbd free body diagram may look like this where p1 p2 p3 and p4 are the primary shear forces p2 dash p3 dash p4 dash and p1 dash are the secondary shear forces and the gap between the rivets is 400 mm 40 mm it's already given 
So this 40 mm will be equal to 0 0.04 meters. And if this is the center point O, these are L1, L2, L3, L4 are the distances from the center point. So to find the L1, L2, L3, L4, we know this angle is 45 degree. And if we draw vertical line from the center point, this is here distance is 0 0.2 meters because it is already 0 0.4 meter in full length. So half of it is 0 0.2 meters. So when we calculate zoom L3 is equal to 0 0.2 upon cos 40 pi. So let's go with the given. P is given as 400 Newton. E is given as 500 mm that is equal to 0 0.5 meters. So L, L1 is equal to L2 and L2 is equal to L3 and is equal to L4. So we know already 0 0.2 upon cos 40 pi gives the L value. So 0 0.02 upon cos 45 that is equal to 0 0.0283 meters L value. Primary shear force this P1, P2, P3 and P4 are equal. So that is equal to 400 applied force divided by number of rivets that is 4. So primary shear force is 100 Newton. And the secondary shear force P2, P1 dash, P2 dash, P3 dash and P4 dash. So that is equal to PEL upon L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square plus L4 square. So we have P as 400, E as 0.5U, L we have calculated 0.0283 and this will become 4L L square. So that is 4 into L square because L1 is equal to L2 is equal to L3 is equal to L4. So we get the secondary shear force as 0. Point, sorry, 1766.784 Newton, the secondary shear force. And then once we have primary shear force and secondary shear force value, now we will find the value of resultant force. And before that, the worst loaded rivets are 2 and 3 because this is rivet number 2 and this is rivet number 3 and we can see the angle is less as compared to rivet number 1 and 4. So that concludes the worst loaded rivets are 2 and 3. So when we see the free body diagram of 2 and 3 here. We have primary shear force 100 Newton and secondary shear force 176.784 Newton. So to find the resultant force out of these two forces, we know the resultant may be here that is R and we have the equation for R as so R square is equal to P1 square plus P1 dash square plus 2 P1 P2 cos theta. 
and here theta is 45 degree and we know already P1 primary shear force, P2 sorry P1 dash secondary shear force. So once we put the R values for R, we get the R as 1838.85 Newton. So the magnitude of the load on the worst loaded rivet is 1838.85 Newtons. A bracket shown in figure is rigidly mounted on wall using four rivets. So we have a bracket with four rivets. It is rigidly mounted on a wall. Each rivet is 6 mm in diameter and has effective length of 12 mm. Direct shear stress in megapascal in the most heavily loaded rivet is. So here in this question they are asking only the direct shear stress that is primary shear stress. So we have given four options. So given here are diameter of rivet 6 mm this is here length of rivet 12 mm here and load applied is 1000 Newton. So from figure equal load is carried by each rivet. So primary or direct force on each rivet to the load is carried equally by all the four rivets. So the primary or direct force that is P of one force number of rivets P is force applied and here four because we have four rivets. So P of one four that is thousand of one four gives 250 Newton. So the force applied on each rivet is 250 Newton that is primary or direct force on each rivet. Now we will find shear area that is cross section area of each rivet. Since the force is, force is applying vertically downwards. So in this rivet the shear force is being applied. And we have to find the cross section area where the shear force is being applied. So if we consider this as the rivet. And these are the force. So for this cross section area we have 5 by 4 d square that is here. So already we know diameter is equal to 6 mm. So pi 6 square divided by 4. So that gives 28.26 mm square as the cross section area. Now we will find the shear stress tau tau equal to force upon area it is here and the force is already found 250 newton area is 28.26 so that gives 8.84 newton per mm square or 8.8 .8 .8 mega pascal so from that option b 8.8 .8 is correct option. A double riveted double cover per joint in plate 20 mm thick. So the plate thickness is 20 mm thick and it is double riveted and double cover per joint is made with 
25 फाइव एम एम डायामीटर रिविट एट हंड्रेड एम एम पिच द परमिशिबल स्ट्रेसिस आर रोटी वन ट्वेंटी मेगा पासकल टू हंड्रेड मेगा पासकल एंड रोसी वन फिफ्टी मेगा पासकल टेकिंग द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द रिविट इन डबल शेयर एज ट्वाइस दैट ऑफ सिंगल शेयर स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द रिविट इन डबल शेयर एज ट्वाइस ऑफ द सिंगल शेयर द टीयरिंग रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द प्लेट विल बी सो वी हैव टू आंसर द टीयरिंग रेजिस्टेंस फोर्स वैल्यू आउट ऑफ दिस गिवन वैल्यूज this is one question and in this same question crushing resistance of the rivet will be and we have some four options so at the first this is the double riveted double cover bud joint we can see here double riveting 1 2 1 2 center portion here cover plate number 1 cover plate number 2 and then they had given it is bud joint thickness of plate that is t is equal to 20 mm that is here diameter of the rivet is 25 mm 25 mm diameter pitch length l is equal to 100 mm so 100 mm pitch and then permissible tensile stress of the plate material roti is equal to 120 mega pascal it is here so it is 120 mega pascal that is equal to 120 newton per mm square and permissible shear stress of the rivet material so this is tensile here and then shear stress that is tau is equal to 100 mega pascal that is here permissible crushing stress of the rivet material rho c is equal to 150 mega pascal so that is here and then they are told to find tearing resistance of the plate so tearing resistance of the plate pt is equal to p minus d t into rho t so we have p as 100 mm and then d is 25 mm thickness of the plate and then roti value so we get 180 kN so therefore in this option d that is 180 kN is correct option coming to crushing resistance of the rivet material so we have crushing resistance of the rivet that is pc is equal to nd t into rho c so n is 2 d is 25 t is 20 and rho c is 120 so that is 150 kN so here option c 150 kN is correct option diagonal pitch term used for chain riveting diamond riveting boilers or zigzag riveting so here the question is the diagonal pitch term is used for out of which this so the diagonal pitch is used for zigzag riveting so that is you can see here pd the diagonal pitch it is used in zigzag riveting therefore option d is correct option 
a longitudinal boiler joint is lap joint bird joint with double cover plate bird joint with single cover plate and bird joint so here longitudinal boiler joint is out of this which type of joint we have to answer so you can see the boiler joint and this is the longitudinal portion and it is the bird joint with double cover plate the cover plate one we can see here and one more cover plate is inside and it is the bird joint with double cover plate that is option B is correct option a single rooted lap joint of two similar plates as shown in figure so it is a single rooted lap joint of two similar plates and the has following geometrical and material details width of the plate w equal to 200 mm so width of the plate is given thickness of the plate t equal to 5 mm thickness of the plate number of rivets n equal to 3 1 2 3 three rivets diameter of rivet dr equal to 10 mm the diameter of rivet is 10 mm diameter of rivet hole dh 11 mm rivet hole diameter 11 mm allowable tensile stress of the plate rho phi equal to 200 mega pascal allowable shear stress of the rivet rho s equal to 100 mega pascal and allowable bearing stress of the rivet rho c equal to 150 mega pascal so these are the given things if the rivets are to be designed to avoid tearing failure the maximum permissible load p in kilo newton is so the question is rivets are to be designed to avoid tearing failure the maximum permissible load p we have to calculate so for tearing failure the maximum permissible load is calculated with the rho c that is allowable bearing stresses of the rivet so we have p equal to n into diameter of rivet into t into rho c so all the values are given we will get the value of 22.5 kN therefore option c is correct option the same problem but here if the plates are to be designed to avoid crushing failure in the last question it was about tearing failure and here it is for crushing failure and we need to find the maximum permissible load for the crushing failure so for crushing failure we have maximum permissible load due to tension that is rho equal to p of on a due to tension rho p equal to p of on a so for p we can write p equal to rho p into a so we have to find the a value so for a equal to w minus w is width minus 3 because these are three holes means three rivets are there 3 into t into t 
So once we put the P equation, it will be 167 point, sorry, 167 kilonewton. So that concludes option C is correct option.